Hi, this is Dale with Sandpiper Pumps. Today we're going to show you the proper procedures to install a wet end kit into an S1F metallic pump. The procedures you're about to see also coincide with the G1F. We're going to utilize Sandpiper Genuine Parts today. Out front we have a wet end kit and an air end kit. All the components used in these kits are the recommended replacement parts when doing a rebuild. The rebuild you are going to see is accurate in man method and machine. For video purposes, some phases of the work performed have been condensed in time. If at any point in time you feel you need to pause this video to get caught up, please feel free to do so. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts wet end and air end kits provide a bill of material for the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warner Up video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considered easier to work with than a pump that has been in a process. Additional time may be required for removal of outer chambers and some of the castings in this unit. These are the recommended tools used with this rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, needle nose pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 9 16 inch, 5 8 inch. Let's get started. For video purposes, we'll be using a 3 8 inch cordless impact gun. Begin by removing the discharge manifold. Once the cap screws are removed, we can now remove the discharge manifold. Once the manifold is removed, we remove the discharge balls and the seats. Set these items off to the side. We can now roll the pump upside down, setting it on the, the outer chambers. We can now get to the cap screws securing the suction manifold into place. Remove the manifold cap screws and the manifold. Remove the seats. You can roll the unit over and remove the suction check balls. Roll the unit up on its side. We can now remove the eight cap screws, securing the outer chamber into place. Set the outer chamber to the side. We can now access the diaphragm assembly. Spin the outer plate in a counterclockwise rotation and spin the assembly from the diaphragm rod. Once the assembly is removed, you will have the outer plate, diaphragm, and inner plate assembly. Remove the diaphragm bumper from the diaphragm rod. Roll the unit up on its side. Again, removing eight cap screws to remove the opposite outer chamber. Once the chamber is removed, we can now push the diaphragm rod through the intermediate assembly and remove the second diaphragm assembly. Next, we need to disassemble the diaphragm assembly. Today, we will use a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while the shaft is clamped in the vise. 
clamp the diaphragm rod into a vise. Turn the diaphragm assembly counterclockwise to remove the assembly from the diaphragm rod. Remove the bumper. Once these are removed, you can remove the diaphragm rod from the soft jaws. At this time, you can expect the shaft for any scars, scratches, or deformities in the shaft. We are now ready to install our wet end kit. Remove the diaphragms, check balls, and seats from the package. Inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. We install a light coating of grease around the inner sealing bead area as well as the outer sealing bead area. The side that says install this side out as the natural bulge of the diaphragm out. That usually goes towards the product side. Slide the diaphragm down onto the stud of the outer diaphragm plate. Install the inner diaphragm plate with a rounded edge towards the diaphragm. Install the diaphragm bumper onto the diaphragm rod and thread onto the stud of the outer diaphragm plate. Once this assembly is threaded together, we need to check the inside radiuses of our intermediate for any imperfection and dress up accordingly. Apply a light coating of grease to the diaphragm rod. Slide the assembly into the intermediate housing. Line the holes up with the diaphragm. At this time we can install some of the cap screws we use for the outer chamber to hold the assembly into position. Once these are installed, we can roll the assembly over, install the bumper, and ready our second assembly for installation. As the previous assembly, lubricate the inner seal, lubricate the outer radius, install the diaphragm with the natural bulge out, install the inner diaphragm plate with the radius towards the diaphragm. For easier installation, we want to invert the diaphragm. This assembly can easily be installed into the intermediate and catch the diaphragm shaft and spin on in a right hand clockwise position. Once snug down to the shaft, we now need to align the diaphragms to the bolt holes in the intermediate. Never go backwards on this assembly. Always tighten in a clockwise position and align the hole to the next hole ahead of you. So the hole in the diaphragm lines up with the hole in the intermediate. Once aligned properly, you can remove the cap screws from the opposite side. Now we are ready to install our outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratches, or material buildup can be cleaned up using emery cloth, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. The discharge side of the chamber should be up towards the serial number plate. Install the eight cap screws to secure the outer chamber into position. Roll the unit over. Using a pry bar, get underneath the inner plate of the diaphragm assembly and push down to invert the diaphragm to the discharge stroke. You can now invert the diaphragm over and line up the holes to install the second outer diaphragm chamber. 
has the opposite side inspect the seat area where the the check ball seats are going to go inspect the suction side ball cages to ensure they are in good condition the discharge side of the chamber should be up towards the serial number plate install the eight cap screws securing the outer chamber into place once these are installed into place roll the unit over so the suction side of the pump is up towards you install the suction balls install the suction seats seats can go in either way there's no up no down they can go in either direction we're now ready to install the suction manifold inspect the face of the manifold where the seats go for integrity the suction manifold can go on in either direction for customer specifications install the eight cap screws that hold the manifold into place please notice the gap between the suction manifold and the outer chamber this will not be a face-to-face -face casting these are a hard seat so it will not squeeze completely together once secured flip the unit over we are now ready to install the discharge seats and check balls Orientation of the manifold is based on the process's requirements and may be installed in either direction. Inspect the discharge manifold, the ball cages to ensure that they are in good condition, they are not worn or any sharp edges. Install the eight cap screws and secure the manifold into position. This completes the wet end rebuild of the S1F unit. We have installed diaphragms, check balls, and seats. The techniques and procedures you have observed also apply to the G1F unit as well. For more information on this rebuild, visit us on our website at sandpiperpump.com or you can contact the after sales support department at service.warrenrup at idexcorp.com. Thank you.